Hey everyone, welcome back to Wrath of Math. In today's video, we'll be going over the formula for the area of an ellipse. So here we go. We've got our beautiful hand-drawn ellipse right here. I haven't drawn the two foci of this ellipse because those are not relevant to this lesson. But remember, the two foci of an ellipse lie on the major axis. So in this ellipse, they'd be maybe about right there and about right there. But we don't need those today. So if we want to find the area of an ellipse, this area that I'm highlighting, how do we do it? Well, we have to use this handy-dandy area formula. The area of an ellipse is equal to A, the length of the semi-major axis, which is half the length of the major axis, times B, the length of the semi-minor axis, which is half the length of the minor axis. So it's a very nice, simple formula. The area of an ellipse is equal to pi times the length of the semi-major axis times the length of the semi-minor axis. But let's quickly get some sense of why this is the area of an ellipse. Consider a circle. What's the area of a circle? Well, you might remember that the area of a circle is pi r squared, where r is the radius of the circle. What's the area of the unit circle? Remember, the unit circle is the circle with a radius length of 1. Using our formula, we know that the area of the unit circle is pi times 1 squared, which is just equal to pi. Then, going from the unit circle to the ellipse, what we're doing is stretching or shrinking one radius length by a factor of a. Then we're also stretching or shrinking the perpendicular radius length by a factor of b. And of course, whether we're stretching or shrinking depends on the ellipse in question. Let me say that one more time. When going from a unit circle to an ellipse, what we're doing is stretching or shrinking one radius length by a factor of a. And then we're stretching or shrinking another perpendicular radius length by a factor of b. So then hopefully it makes some sense that the area of an ellipse is equal to pi, the area of the unit circle, times a times b. So hopefully that makes this area formula seem a bit intuitive and not just pulled out of thin air. Now let's quickly go through an example before we are done for the day. Let's say that the length of the major axis of this ellipse is 7 centimeters. And let's say the length of the minor axis is 6 centimeters. Then remember the area is equal to pi times the length of the semi-major axis times the length of the semi-minor axis. The length of the semi-major axis, A, is equal to half the length of the major axis, which is half of 7 centimeters. So the length of the semi-major axis is equal to 1 half times 7 centimeters, which is equal to 3.5 centimeters. And then b, the length of the semi-minor axis, is half the length of the minor axis, which is half of 6 centimeters. So then b, the length of the semi-minor axis, is equal to 1 half times 6 centimeters, which is equal to 3 centimeters. So the area of this ellipse is equal to pi, multiplied by a, which is 3.5 centimeters, multiplied by b, which is 3 centimeters. 3.5 times 3 is 10.5, so this is equal to 10.5 pi centimeters squared. Because remember, we have centimeters times centimeters, and area is a square unit. So we know this is centimeters squared. And then if you like approximations, this is equal to about 33 centimeters squared. So 10.5 pi centimeters squared is the area of this ellipse, which is about 33 centimeters squared. And again, to find the area of an ellipse, you multiply pi by the length of the semi-major axis, which is half the length of the major axis, and then multiply that by b, the length of the semi-minor axis, which is half the length of the minor axis. And of course, the order that you do this multiplication in doesn't matter because multiplication is commutative. Now, let me give you an example to try on your own before we go. 
try to find the area of this ellipse that has a major axis length of 10 centimeters and a minor axis length of 5 centimeters. Let me know what you get down in the comments, and I'll leave the solution in the description. And that's it for today, so I hope this video helped you understand what the formula for the area of an ellipse is and how to use it. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description. Uh -huh.